What is up, YouTube? I'm Adam O'Dell, Chief Investment Strategist at MoneyAndMarkets.com, and I'm joined once again this week by my research analyst, Matt Clark. And we're here for another episode of Ask Adam Anything, where you can literally ask me anything and I'll give you my take, whether I'm an expert in that field or not. So we, uh, we welcome any questions you'd like to leave in the comments section below. You can also email us questions and we'll take it from there. But Matt, I know that crypto is on everyone's mind this week. So you want to talk about crypto this week? I do, because if, if it's not inflation or or the recent stock market drop, it's crypto, and they all kind of work together in a way. So, but I want to I want to focus on one crypto specifically, and, and the reason why is just because if you want to talk about, you, I think you said it best uh, before we started recording. I think you said dirt nap, and I, th I think that's that is uh, that is perfect. And, and what I want to talk about the the crypto is Terra Luna or Luna, basically as it's known uh, in in the space. And this is a crypto, as I'm looking at a chart here on the side, uh, it reached a high on April 5th of this year, this, just like a month ago, a month and a half ago. And it was at about $117, $117.44 was, was where it was at. It had about $2.6 billion in volume on that day alone. Now, fast forward to today, the price of, of Luna, as I look at it right now, as we record this, is 0 0.0001307. So a fraction of a fraction of a penny is how much Luna is. Its volume is still sizable. I mean, it's still decent. It's at about 453 million uh, is its volume at this point, but not nearly where it was at the highs of close to 3 billion with its volume and a price of you know, 117, $118. So, I want to talk about that. I know you and I aren't necessarily, you know, experts when it comes to crypto. We know enough to be dangerous, and, and we really lean into uh, one of our one of our, our really really good friends. We'll talk about that here in just a little bit. But I want to get your take on Luna and what you saw uh, over the last, even just over the last week or so. I mean, on on May eighth, sixty five dollars, and then again we had a, a bit of a, a, a somewhat of uh, an upward momentum move on, on uh, May tenth. To 3365, but it has just been a catastrophic downfall uh, of Luna since since April. Yeah, I mean, there's there's a number of uh, teaching moments or opportunities to learn about uh, the the you know crypto market in general and, and risk assets um, even more generally. And if you have to realize that Luna was selling for less than a dollar in 2020, and it rose all the way up to nearly 120 dollars. Uh, this year, which is absolutely insane. So I uh, realize I want to balance the opportunity in crypto with some real talk, you know, take the medicine, you know, reality in crypto as well. And, you know, Luna is an example where, first of all, everyone talks about crypto being the antithesis of fiat currency, fiat currency being, you know, currency issued by the government. And they point to Bitcoin having like a, a, a finite supply that's baked into the algorithm. But, you have to realize that fiat currency is a game of confidence. So if everyone at the same time loses confidence in the ruple or the US dollar or the euro, uh, then basically that currency can go to zero because yes, it's backed by the full faith of the US government in the case of the dollar or whatnot, but, but really what does that mean? And, and really the currencies are a confidence game. If there's confidence and, and momentum and, and demand behind that currency, then the price of the currency and the value can go up. And if that confidence in, in, uh, in, in the currency disappears overnight and there's a run on the bank, so to speak, then that, that currency can, can go to zero. And that's essentially what happened with Luna. So that's lesson number one. I mean, crypto is certainly a game of confidence and since there's not necessarily uh, you know, revenue or earnings backing up a lot of these projects the way that uh, equities are. And more generally, crypto is a risk asset. So that doesn't mean you should not uh, trade it. But you know, a lot of times people think that crypto is designed to trade opposite of the US equity markets, that if stocks go down, then crypto is going to go up, or if gold's going down, then crypto is going, uh, you know, going to go up. But that's not necessarily the case either. Um, you know, I think a lot of people are starting to see uh, crypto as a for what it is, which is a risk asset, not necessarily a safe haven asset. Um, you know, another teaching moment is that, you know, look for, I, I think we can dub this the, the tattoo indicator. Um, but you, you, talk, <laughs> you talk about, um, you know, this idea that when the shoeshine boy is talking about buying stocks, that's, that's you know, an indicator that there's too much uh, mania, there's too much jubilance in the market. And, and it's basically calling the top in, in stocks or a risk asset like that. Well, in January, you know, uh, Michael Novogratz, the, the head of uh, uh, Galaxy Digital, 
um, basically a, a large fund that invests in crypto and, and other uh, ventures. He uh, on Twitter was bragging about this big arm tattoo that he got with Luna and this, this we'll, we'll put up a picture of it, but Luna and this big wolf howling at the moon. And he tweeted to Do Kwan, the, the, the head of uh, Terra Labs that put out Luna. And um, so basically, I think it's interesting because there's a lot of I think a lot of hubris and a lot of, uh, you know, uh, overconfidence in that that type of action. And sure enough, uh, you know, a few few months later, a few short months later, Terra goes from 120 down to down to zero. Um, Novogratz is quoted recently saying that his tattoo is a constant reminder that venture investing requires humility, and he will have that uh, unless he gets it covered up with something else. He'll have that that reminder for the rest of his life. So I was gonna say, that's yeah, a life would, lesson right there. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> I would say that the tattoo is the opposite of humility, but. Um, but that's another teaching moment. You know, crypto is a lot like venture capital. So venture capital, unlike you know public equity markets, where you know usually companies have been around for several years before they IPO or come to the markets via SPAC. Um, but with venture capital, you're investing in companies that maybe have three founders and, and a good idea, and that's about it. And maybe maybe some users on their platform. But uh, but basically, with venture investing. The, the idea is that if you make 10 investments in very small stage private equity uh, type companies, that nine of them are going to go to zero and then one of them is going to go to the moon. And the idea is that that one that goes to the moon is going to more than make up for the nine zeros uh, that you suffer. And, and that's basically I'm very familiar with that uh, strategy. It's called a positive skew strategy. Uh, that's basically trend following is what my background is. And uh, in trend following and then positive skew strategies, like when you buy options, like if you're buying call options, you don't necessarily win a majority of your trades. In fact, you you expect to lose a majority of your trades, but the losses are capped at a certain level. And then the size of your winning trades can be many, many, many orders of magnitude, like 10X, 100X, 500X, larger than the size of your losers. And that's the name of the game. You have to be willing to put your neck out on the line and, and take a lot of zeros and, and get maybe caught and get caught wrong-footed in, in something that goes, uh, you know, six feet under like Luna. Uh, but for every one of those, uh, or for every nine of those, really, there's going to be one that's going to go to the moon. And, um, and really, so those are a lot of the you know general lessons. You mentioned our friend Ian King. Um, you really, Ian is my right-hand man when it comes to crypto. And, and he's a great lesson on how to get into something early and how to take profits. I mean, usually, by the time my, my wife asks me about something that she's read about in the crypto market, I know it's too late. I know that everybody's heard about, you know, whether it's Dogecoin or, you know, whatever the case. Um, that's fair. <laughs> But you know you got to get in early. Um, Ian King basically did have his subscribers in Luna not during this crash. He had them out for this crash, but he he had his uh, subscribers in Luna back in December of 2020. So we're really early in this uh, at 48 cents a coin. Uh, he had he um, had his subscribers take profits about three months later in March of 2021. Uh, when it had gone from 48 cents to almost 20 dollars, that's a gain of nearly 4,000 percent. Um, and then he had um, them take the rest of their profits about a year into the trade uh, in December of 2021 at just shy of $90 um, a coin. So that was a gain of 18,000%. So again, the size of the winners matters. If, if the most you can lose on an investment is 100%, assuming you haven't you know, over leveraged yourself on a margin, but if you just play a cash play, uh, the most you can lose is 100%. But obviously, if you get an eighteen thousand percent gain, that is so many orders of magnitude more than that. Then you can more more than handle a few losers and have more than a few go to zero, and it, it certainly makes up for that. So I was certainly, you know, I have, have I given up on the crypto market? Absolutely not. Uh, you know, will will Luna pull itself out of this hole? I don't know. That's that remains to be questioned. I'm kind of skeptical there, but uh, but certainly there's a lot of altcoins and a lot of you know quote unquote blue chip coins. That I think will survive just fine. And it's certainly going to be a nasty bear market. That's what you see in crypto. Uh, but again, Ian King is our expert who we look to, and, and he uh, continues to have confidence in the ecosystem and he's taking the long view. So that's where I'd point uh, viewers today. And we'll, we'll put up a way where you can find out more about Ian. And then he does have uh, a service revolving around crypto. And it is, again, you, you mentioned Luna in 2020. Uh, he got his viewers in, he got his readers in at 48 cents. And they saw uh, twice taking profits, one at, at $20 and another at $90, near $90. Uh, so I am a massive opportunity there. And there is, I, I agree with you. I think there's a lot of potential with crypto. Um, I just, I just wonder if the market is a little diluted and, and, you know, with, with so many of them out there now realizing that Terra 
is the blockchain and the coin associated with that blockchain is Luna. So that's, you know, there, there's some differentiating thing uh, to, to make sure that, 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 you know, viewers understand. Um, whenever I say it's Terra Luna, it's because it's Terra is the blockchain, Luna is the, is the currency that is used on that blockchain. Um, but Adam, I, I think you covered it well. I don't know if you have any parting shots. Uh, uh, obviously, we're still, we, we, we're still, I think we're still bullish with crypto. It's just, you know, just like with the rest of the market, it's uh, facing, uh, facing a, a bit of a down, but some headwinds. Look, like any bear market, it washes out the weak hands, it resets people's expectations, it resets prices. And it gives folks that maybe weren't, uh, you know, hip to the game, so to speak, earlier on, a second chance to take a look at some tremendous opportunities. And basically, when everybody's given up on something, when there's blood in the streets, so to speak, that's the time to buy. So I'm not necessarily saying that the selling is done. Um, you know, crypto tends to crash, you know, 70 to 90 percent or more. It's kind of like if you think back to the dot com. I mean, the Nasdaq 100 was down about 85 or, or a bit more than 85 percent. And uh, so what happened? Did, did technology, did, did internet companies go away? No, the, the weakest ones, the crappiest ones got, um, got washed out. And a lot of investor capital got washed out for anybody that piled, piled on too late. Uh, but it was a tremendous investing opportunity if you invested in some of, you know, like Amazon in 2002. I mean, the rest is history. Uh, Google in 2004, the, the rest is history. So um, it's, it's certainly, uh, you know, bear markets, are, bear markets are scary and they cause people to, to freeze up and to be hesitant. But really, um, if you have some dry powder, if you some, have some cash on hand and uh, you can be patient through a bear market, uh, that's really the name of the game to find it as a buying opportunity. So that's the way I see it. Good, good parting shot there. And again, if you uh, if you do have a question for Adam or for Charles Sizemore or myself, you'd like to, to address in any of our videos or, or maybe even in, in written form, we would love to do that. You can email us. Uh, the email address is feedback at moneymarkets.com. We'll flash that right down below here. Or you can comment below on our YouTube page. We'd love to see any of your feedback, any of your comments, questions, market concerns, anything like that. We love to see it. Try to get back to uh, as many people as we can. Uh, we do get a lot, but we, we do love re reading all the feedback that we get on almost a day daily basis. So appreciate that. Uh, Adam, thanks again for your time. Look forward to doing it again next week. Sounds great, Matt. See you then.